derivatives of inverse functions or inverse relations. Uh, this is not specific to inverse trig. That's a separate lesson. Um, so before we dive into this, let's just recap some of the highlights of inverses that you learned in Algebra 2 and Pre-Cal. Um, the main property that we're going to take advantage of is this one, that f of f inverse is equal to x and f inverse of f is equal to x. So if two functions are inverses, then their composition preserves the identity of the input, and that's the whole point of an inverse. Um, a few other simple things. Um, if you are given f of x, you find the inverse by swapping x and y and solving for uh, y in the new equation. And then graphically, the relationship is that the graph of a function and its inverse are reflections over the line y equals x. So there's a quick recap. And let's talk about some calculus now. And we are going to be challenged with finding the derivative of an inverse. And so I'm going to show you real quickly a proof that will hopefully help you remember the formula we're going to end up using. So I'm not a big fan of just rote memorization for, for calculus. If I can show you a reason something exists, I will. So here we are. And we start with the relationship that f of f inverse is equal to x. And I'm interested in the derivative of f inverse. And so to force that into this equation, I will differentiate both sides of this identity, of this property. And when I differentiate the right side, right side is super easy. That's just going to be 1. Uh, the left side, however, we have a chain rule. We have f of f inverse. So that derivative will be f prime of f inverse of x, and then times the derivative of the inside. And I'm going to write the derivative of the inside like this. You can write f, whoops, it is possible to write f inverse prime of x, but that just looks stupid to me. Uh, and there are a few other ways you could use the prime notation, but I like ddx f inverse. Uh, anyway, moving on, uh, we want to find out what the derivative of f inverse is. And so we have one step remaining. We are simply going to divide that whole equation by f prime of f inverse of x. And when I do that, we end up with the formula that you probably should just memorize. Not that this proof was that long, but it is definitely more efficient to memorize. The derivative of an inverse is 1 over f prime of f inverse of x. And I would recommend you write that down and you remember that because it's the most efficient, most direct way of getting these answers rather than having to start from scratch and using the chain rule to generate that yourself. So let's do a few questions involving inverses, starting with a quick pre-cal review. Uh, first one, I've given you a table for f of x, and I want you to find f inverse of 7. And what you have to remember is that f inverse of 7, if x is 7 in f, f inverse, that means that y is 7 in your function f. And so when I look here, I see that f of 5 is equal to 7. That means that f inverse of 7 is equal to 5. And so there is f inverse of 7. Um, if you have a table of values, it's a lot easier. Uh, sometimes, though, and on rare occasion, you don't have a table of values. You have an equation. Um, and so here we have f of x is x squared minus 3x plus 6. We want to find f inverse of 4. Um, now, you could, if you wanted, you could just solve this and actually get an inverse. You could say, okay, let's swap x and y. x equals y squared minus 3, y plus 6, and then solve that equation for y. But that's going to be really complicated. It's an option, but I'm not worried about the equation for the inverse. I just need the inverse specifically at 4. So that means that y is equal to 4 for f of x. And that, so I'm just going to take my f of x equation, x squared minus 3x plus 6, set that equal to 4, and then solve that equation, x squared minus 3x plus 2 equals 0, factor. And we actually have two such values. We have x equals 1 and x equals 2 that makes the function equal to 4. Therefore, f inverse of 4 could be 1 or f inverse of 4 could be 2. So there are two such values, and that's why I put in here find a value, so one or the other would have been sufficient. So let's go do some calculus now. We have a table of values. This has f and f inverse available for you. Um, 
they do tell you that they are differentiable functions. And so I want you to get in the habit of making uh, the connection that that means these functions are also continuous. Anything that is differentiable must be continuous. We are looking for the slope of the line tangent to F inverse at X equals four. And I'm going to denote that as the derivative of F inverse of X such that or at the point x equals 4. That's what I'm looking for. And so I'm going to start by writing down the general derivative for f inverse. And I would recommend you write this every time until you commit it to memory. That's 1 over f prime of f inverse of x. And so then if I want to do that at x equals 4, that would be 1 over f prime of f inverse of 4. And now it's just a matter of pulling this information correctly out of the table. And so F inverse of four means we want to find four in the Y value for F of X. So F of two is equal to four. Therefore, F inverse of four is equal to two. So I'm going to substitute that in here. One over F prime of two. And F prime of two is explicitly in the table. That's two thirds. So one over two thirds which you can stop there, or that is the same thing as three halves. So these problems, they're very quick. The, actually executing them is not too bad. It's the formula that's a little bit tricky and can um, confuse you a little bit. Let's try another one. Here, instead of a table, we have an equation uh, for f of x, and I want the equation of the line. You should immediately be thinking point and slope. I need a point and a slope. And then do notice that it says the equation of the line normal. So we're going to get the tangent slope and then do the negative reciprocal. And we are looking at x equals 5. So let's start by getting the point. I need f inverse of 5, which means I need f of x to actually equal 5. And so that will be what? y cubed plus 3 equals 5. I think I have a typo in here. That is supposed to be negative 5. I'm going to fix that really quick. Let's make that negative 5. I'm going to make that negative 5. I typed this very quickly. Didn't catch that. Okay, so we're going to make that negative 5 just to make it a little bit cleaner. And let's see, x cubed is going to equal negative 8, which means x is negative 2. And so now I know that f inverse of 5 equals negative 2. So there's my point, 5, negative 2. Now for the slope... I need the derivative of f inverse, which is 1 over f prime of f inverse of, and I'm interested in what's happening at x equals 5. Okay, at x equals 5, this would be 1 over f prime of f inverse of negative 5. I need to fix that negative. I'm not fixing my negatives in here. Ugh. This is what happens when you make a change in the middle of a problem and you're not paying attention to everything that you're writing. I can squeeze the negative there. Okay. Whoops. Negative 5. Negative 5. And negative 5. There. <gasps> oh, one more. Blech. Okay. So now I have 1 over f prime of f inverse of negative 5. And this one's going to be nice because we just found f inverse of negative 5 and found out that was negative 2. Now I need f prime of negative 2. Well, that's going back to my original f. That's not f inverse. That's f. So give me some room to work here. Um, so to find f prime of negative 2, I'm going to start by finding f prime of x. And this is an easy derivative. f prime would just be 3x squared. And f prime of negative 2 is going to be 12. So there's f prime of negative 2 is 12. So my final slope of the inverse at negative 5 ends up being 1 12th, but we do want the normal slope. So if my tangent slope is 1 12th, my normal slope is going to be negative 12. And then we can finally take the point 5, negative 5, negative 2, the slope, negative 12, and roll those into point slope form. So y minus negative 2 equals my slope x minus negative 5. And obviously you can write that as y plus 2 and x plus 5, but I'm being lazy. 
<sighs> there, sorry about the negative five mix up. Whoops. One more. So this one's presented ever so slightly differently than the others. Uh, we have F and G. You, they are both differentiable. And again, you should make sure that you should know that that is continuous. So I'm going to make a note to myself that they are continuous. Here, they said that F of G of X equals X. They never actually mention inverses. However, however, if the composition of two functions is equal to X, that means that they are inverses of each other. So that means f of x is equal to g inverse of x, and g of x is equal to f inverse of x. They are inverses of each other. So, so we have that connection. Then it asks you to find g prime of three, given all of this information. And because they are asking for g prime, they're wanting you to connect to g, I have to choose the relationship that actually has g of x in it. So I'm going to use this one right here. G, g is the inverse of f. And so I'm going to find the derivative of g. g prime of x is going to be the derivative of f inverse, which is back to our formula, 1 over f prime of f inverse of x. And so g prime of 3 is 1 over f prime of f inverse of 3. And now we just have to evaluate that equation. f inverse of 3 means you want f of x to equal 3. f of negative 1 is 3. So f inverse of 3 is negative 1. So I have 1 over f prime of negative 1. And then f prime of negative 1 is given right here. f prime of negative 1 is 2, so my final answer is 1 half. And I'm double checking. They just wanted the value of g prime of 3. They did not want an equation of a tangent line. So we are done.